So welcome to the show, guys. Thank you so much for being with us. Man, today we have a great guest on. Miss Susan Hutchison, the first lady of our state, is going to be with us. We're going to do apple pie. She has a great crust recipe that I think you guys will really like. So we're going to get started. I want to have you guys see her. Come on in. This is Cooking Today. Welcome into the show, and thank you so much for being with us. I hope you're having a good day. I'm having such a good time. I have a great guest on the show. Ms. Susan Hutchison is with me today, the first lady of our great state. I'm so proud that oh, you are here. Thank you, Susan. Thanks for being with me. I'm mighty proud to be here. My audience is going to enjoy this very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be good. We are making apple pie today. Yes. We're going to use your pie crust. Yes. Tell us about it. Well, um, pie crust, um, when I married Asa, I was into cakes and cookies, but he was a pie man. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I had to learn to make pies. So uh, family gave me uh, everything I needed to make pies, the cloth uh, pastry, the um, stocking for the rolling Roller, pin, yeah. the bear ball uh, rolling <laughs> pin, um, just everything and uh, then I started practicing <laughs> that first year and, and kept practicing it's a bit of an art form yes uh, you don't want to work with the dough too much you never re-roll it unless you're going to use it for the topper or yep. make little crusties yep. uh, out of it it's a little variation that I do um, with the leftover pie crust and uh, through the years you She's you learned um, uh, all the nuances mm -hmm. and uh, and I relied on my Betty Crocker cookbook. It was a wedding gift, and I called it my Bible. It, it told me how to boil eggs, to pasta, to exactly what to do with the uh, pie dough. Awesome. So I relied on that, and it gave me precisely the recipe that I needed for whatever size pie crust I needed for whatever kind of pie I wanted to make. Good reference book. Uh, absolutely. And the kids, after they uh, graduated from home, um, they kept asking me for different recipes out of it, and I gave up and went on eBay and Did bought you know a. Everybody won? I bought at all four kids. Awesome. And they all have their own, and they stopped asking all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Very so good. made it a lot easier. It's a like a 1970 73 publishing. We married in 73. Awesome. So. And in fact, I had to. I used it so much, I had to get a new one. I, I literally <laughs> wore it apart, and it broke apart. That's a good book. So it's a, a really book good. That you, that's used like right. that's a good book. Right, and it uh, tells you, you know, uh, the peak uh, time to um, uh, cut open that avocado, or oh yeah, or oh, yeah. the peak performance of your different vegetables and everything, and and all. But the pie crust yeah, is the one we it. do. Yeah, let's get into so, it. So yes. um, through the years, I realized that it made a difference uh, about sifting, mm -hmm. and I always like to use plain flour and add my own extras with the salt or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a good grip, so I go with a grinder. My mama, this is what I grew up with. This right. is what my mama had, and this was my job when right. she made cake and pie. And uh, once you get it broken in, you don't worry about washing it. You just uh, store it in a plastic bag, keep it clean that way. Yes. Um, so it doesn't do any clumping. And then, of course, you um, gently measure so that the flour doesn't do all that stacking and shaking. You don't do that. It's just a nice lift. And we're going to need two cups since we're doing a two layer. Okay. Uh, with the fruit pies, um, you want to do the top crust and gently do that. And that's my favorite bowl okay. to do the shortening is a narrow uh, bottom bowl with high sides. Now you can buy the um, pastry blender for the shortening. I never got the knack of that, so I'll be using knives, okay. just table knives, to uh, crisscross in the shortening. Shortening is kind of tricky, and different um, recipe books will tell you to um, measure your shortening by displacement. 
we'll need this extra flour yeah, later. Don't, that. yeah, don't yeah. let that go away. Yeah. We'll need it. Stay. Um, but I like to, um, I've already measured out one third. We're doubling the recipe today. So that's the, that's the first one third. Okay. And the way I like to measure it, like I said, some recipe books like to measure it by displacement and when you put it in water and see what level it comes up to so that you know, it got complicated. Um, so I just do it this way smash and smash it in, smash and, it in and pull it out. Yeah. And just pull it out, it, yeah. ring around it, and you're really not going to lose anything that way. This recipe also calls for two tablespoons, and uh, this is not an endorsement. I'm not getting paid to endorse Crisco, <laughs> but I tried some different brands. I tried Animal Lard, adjusted the recipe for it, but I found that Crisco for me worked Works. the best mm -hmm. for what I was looking for. And what we, what Asa prefers is a thin crust flaky. Okay. So this will not work as a commercial crust. I grew up with this in my house, my mom. Used <laughs> I know. And uh, that, that's what my mom used. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so it was just natural. So then what we're doing is just um, crisscrossing through the shortening. Mm -hmm. Now this is one of the things that the cookbook tries to explain to you just how much of this you do, um, crisscrossing and getting the shortening to blend in with the flour. Yeah, we're trying to make it look flaky. I mean, milly looking. Milly almost. looking, yes. kind of cornmeal looking. Yeah. And this is a this is something that I do a lot with the food processor. Uh, especially if you're at, if I'm adding butter, cold butter to a pie crust, I'll just use the processor to pulse it up to get to that point. Yeah, well, they didn't make those when <laughs> we were uh, scrambling around getting through law school and living off four hundred dollars a month. <laughs> you guys, we're gonna take a quick break. We we we're gonna get our pie crust ready to go. When we get back, we're gonna roll this pie out show you just how easy it is. We're going to add a few more ingredients. We'll tell you about those when we get back. I'll stick around. This is Hutchison's here. This is cooking today. Okay, everybody, welcome back. We're going to continue on making our pie crust here. We have added a couple of tablespoons of water to it, and we wanted to talk a little bit about the cold water because we have ice water sitting yes. right here. What I found is very important for the water to be absolutely cold. So I use uh, cold water and put in some ice cubes and let that sit. And then we're um, gently adding in uh, one, maybe two tablespoons at a time. You want to be careful because not every day do you need the same amount of moisture. It depends on the uh, humidity, the moisture in the air. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you don't need as much. And you, uh, you don't want the dough to be wet. You just want it, uh, the flour to kind of combine uh, with the shortening in the flour so that you actually get more of a consistency of Play-Doh. So y you don't want it glistening wet mm -hmm. and then it just starts sticking together. And we've got an extra large dish today so I'm really just going to roll all of this out to be the one. Okay. Um, since we have such a deep pie that we're doing there. Want me to add another tablespoon? Are you good? I think we're good. I think it's my hands okay. need some flour on them. Flour on there. It's very important to save that extra flour out. Yes, it process. is. Because uh, you want to be sure and have enough. I think that's good. With that, we don't need all that. And um, you want to make sure, get those crumbs away, that you have the flour sprinkled out on the, on the board, mm -hmm. on the surface. And I'm old school. I like the pastry cloth. This is nice. Uh, it's not. It's They're hard to find. <laughs> not one that I've used before. Uh, I, I, my mother never used one either. No. So, no. And uh, my mom, for years, she didn't have the uh, rolling pin. She used a uh, Seven Up bottle. Wow. Because it was smooth and it didn't have any indentations on it. You know, Indented. like 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 the other. Yes. That's awesome. I mean, Blue collar. <laughs> Blue collar. That's awesome. So we did that. So then you want to take it and um, start your circle and get the edges to make sure they stay. And the less you work with the pastry, the better off you are. Yes. Um, it'll 
If you work it too much, it'll get harder and not be as flaky. And you want to keep the ridges going. Uh, avoid the ridges cutting into there and go back and make sure you round it out. Yeah, you overwork it, it gets tough and doesn't stay tender. It does not stay tender at all. You're absolutely nice. right. Um, so if... Uh, a beautiful crust, by the way. Look at that. <laughs> Thank you. And then, of course, you're going for a round. Yes, ma'am. But you can use the same recipe for whatever shaped dish. Uh, you know, sometimes you're doing an oblong... Um, yeah, the, the uh, yeah, it's a rectangular shape glass right. dish or something, yeah. Let me try to get those in. That looks great. The, the cloth leaves these cool, cool texture to it, too. Right, and uh, this way you, you're not, um, you have a good tension that I like between the, the cloth and the pastry cloth. Uh, I've tried other um, mats and it just doesn't work. Now this is the extra tricky part that's not in the recipe book. It's pray time. Because if you make a mistake here, you can't re-roll it out. It'll be tough. Okay. So um, I do a lot of praying. <laughs> I'm right here with you. <laughs> so that I do it gently and, then I'm, and if ever you're gonna be perfect in your life, this is a good time to do it. And get that over closer because you don't want the fingers to poke up through it and then you do a gentle lift look at you and let it drop in and just let it drop in now this is where I differ with Betty Crocker she talks about folding it over in quarters and quarters and I thought man that's <laughs> that's a lot of praying to make <laughs> sure I don't make a mistake yes, and break through uh, the crust because like I said, if you re-roll it, you're going to make it tough. Now what I did learn to do was if I was making a, a, a double crust pie like you're doing today, I would use um, the fouled up one as the topper. Right. And then I got to where I uh, did the lattice and crisscross and that really takes away all the errors. And you see we have extra, but we've lifted it up and let it just drop in there. So then we take the knife and just see what extra we have on the side and because I'm a pincher I'm, I'll take I'll do right around the edge with my finger and just crop off that extra yes I like to pinch my you know have that nice pinch going right on. now I would ordinarily fold under that like great. that mm -hmm. but since you're doing the, and um, and one of the variations you can do is if you like um, the lattice look, you can take your finger and just do a gentle pinch exactly. if you're doing a single pie, mm -hmm. but we're not doing that today. Okay. So um, what we would do is just leave this edge out there, roll out the other topper, mm -hmm. put that on top of the filling, and pull it up underneath. Pinch it together. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Really nice. Thank you. That is a beautiful crust. When we get back, we're going to make the apples that go inside there, man. Show you a beautiful apple pie. This is cooking today. Y'all stick around. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the show. We have made a beautiful pie crust. We've also made the top. We made a little extra dough to go on the top. Instead of doing lattice, I decided to do just a topper for it. And so we, we've got our top ready to go here. And we have to get our apples done. I want to show you this part of the recipe as fast as I can. And this is one stick of butter, so a, a quarter pound. And I have my apples. Ms. Hutchison uh, was watching me cut apples, and she's, she, we're going <laughs> to practice. I that's need easy. to practice. Yeah, that's easy. Are they any good? You can oh. try one. Let me know if they're any good. Oh, yeah. Granny Smith. So about three tablespoons of flour that I'm going to add to the sugar, or to the butter, excuse me. And I'm just, I mean, it's just an eyeball on that. So what I'm doing here basically is, is making a shallow bit of roux. But it's a sweet roux because we're kneading it for our, our, our apples. So I'm going to take and pack about a half a cup of brown sugar. I'm also going to take some sugar granulated, about the same amount. About half a cup, let out a little bit there. 
and add it right into that butter. And so this mm. is going to be that nice, sweet, thick liquid inside with our, our apples. I'm going to add vanilla right to this. I mean, just get it all right in there. And all it needs now is just a dash of cinnamon. And we'll just hit it right here, right in this mixture. And before it gets too hot, we're done. That's it. That's all we're going to do to it. Oh, that's, that's it. Fast. No messing around. Take this and pour it right over our apples. Just like that. Now, I'm going to bring these here and just start to mix them up. I want to let that butter cool off before I get my hands in there, because I'm going to get my <laughs> hands in there. But I want to let it touch those apples real quick to start the cool down process. And then I can put that away and get right in. And what I want to do is try and get the apples to touch the butter in every section. So where the apples are, are still kind of touching each other, spread them apart, That's and yummy. just get it coated. <laughs> Smells great, doesn't it? Oh, it does. And I love having guests on because they get to smell <laughs> what's going on. The, the audience can't really smell it. So it's really nice that, to have a little confirmation here. So that's it. What I'll do is take the apples right into the pie, just like that. Start, I mean, I'm going to mound these up. It is eight Granny Smith apples. I love a tart cut. pie. Oh man, you gotta have the tart. The tart with the sweets, best. So good. And we'll just mound this guy up as much as possible. Just mm -hmm. make sure it's nice and mounded up. And pack those guys in. Just make sure none fall out. Then we're gonna take that top and put it right on there. You wanna mm -hmm. go ahead with that? I'm gonna wash my hands. Okay. All right. Do the gentle lift. Try to lay it. Gently over that. Beautiful. And how much you want to cut off? A I, I, what we're going to do, what I like to do, since we have so much left over on both sections, I'm going to do this. I'll okay. take I'll right around the edge and just take the edge off, right against the, the pie dish itself. Okay. That makes it all nice and neat. And then what I can do is do the same pinch process. So I'll start here and just start to pinch it, just like that. And every time I pinch, I get one finger in the in a new hole in a new spot, and then the same finger the next time the oh. same spot with the next finger, Beautiful. just to make sure it's done. Makes it look more delicious than ever. That looks cool. That is cool. So just keep pinching off the edges as you go. And what we're doing is we're crimping, sealing the edge, and making that nice, pretty ring around it. You do want the two different crusts to be sealed together. Yes. And the pressure will do that. Yes. You don't want the pie, the liquid, because that sugar and that butter are going to create mm -hmm. a liquid in there. You don't want it seeping out the back edge of the pie crust. No. We don't want to lose any of that good sugar. No. <laughs> that, that love, we need it. <laughs> we need it. Okay, and then what from there, and you have a butter knife. Perfect. Well, that's a little bit. It'd be okay. Serrated. What I do is take and make a nice few slits in it. You gotta let the steam out? Yep. So, just in a few spots. That's lovely. You can do all kinds of decorations, smiley faces, all whatever. <laughs> all kinds of stuff. And then right in the middle, I'll put a couple as well just across, just a little bit, just cut right into it. And, and if you want to make any ribbons or anything out of this extra dough, you can. And what I like to do as well, as well as put a little butter right on top. I'll rub mm. it with a little butter. Now you're talking browning. Mm -hmm. It'll make it brown for sure. And I want to show you guys the finished product. We already have one made right here. This is the beautiful apple pie made with so much love you guys yep. mm -mm -mm. the governor's favorite magic Apple of television pie. how it works right there Ms. Hutchison thank you for being here thank you very much will Steve. you come back again absolutely this awesome. is too much fun thank you so much <laughs> thank you this is cooking today made with love